in the archives at the Vatican. First of all, it's about five miles of archives underground mm-hmm. and, and very, very uh, secure access. In other words, you can't just go, oh, I'm going to go check out the archives underground. No, you have to be a, a, a security cleared, almost top secret cleared based on their standards to get down there. Uh, but they have in there so many incredible discoveries, so much knowledge and wisdom that have been stolen, literally stolen from all around the world. And of course, the Library of Alexandria, that was a book heist. The fire was a distraction. <laughs> the real story of Alexandria, it was a book heist. It was a knowledge theft. They stole the knowledge. They left a few books burning here and then they burned it down to the ground. But the vast majority of the knowledge and wisdom stored at Alexandria was siphoned off and taken to that underground, I call it an underground base at the Vatican. Down there also, according to even some Jesuits, are bones of actual, quote unquote, alien beings, mm-hmm. uh, information about uh, advanced beings that visited this planet, the Anunnaki, according to the Dogon, the Nomo, and the Sumerians call them the Pantheon, call them the, the, the Anunnaki Pantheon out of Samaria. They call them Nitiru out of Africa. They had, they have all these relics and artifacts of these particular people, even out of Greece. Uh, they have all this down there. They have information even out of Iraq that shows and proves that advanced races had lived on this planet long before this current civilization here exists. And I'm talking about eons and eons ago, super highly advanced with technologies and capabilities of flight and everything else, weapons of war that existed. All that information is stored underneath the Vatican archives, along with some of the most incredible texts and books and inventions that ever existed on this planet. And they siphon it away and they're hoarding all of that wisdom and knowledge so that they can keep control and power and domination over the world. And guess what? It's working. You know, if the public knew that long before uh, Jesus, long before Moses and all these people, you know, supposedly were even born or existed, that thousands of years before them, an advanced race lived on this planet, built an Atlantean global civilization, probably Atlantean interplanetary civilization, that had capability of space flight and everything else, and that they most likely genetically modified the existing hominids, which then became Homo sapien sapien, in order to put us all in slavery and make us do the workload for them. If we, if they knew that, those stories and those tales from the Sumerian tablets, the Mahabharata, the Bhagavad Gita, the Indian Vedas, Tibetan Book of the Dead, the Egyptian Book of Going Forth by Day, aka the Egyptian Book of the Dead, uh, you know, the Enuma Elish and the Seven Tablets of Creation, the Epic of Atra Hasis, and of all the, if they, the myth of Adapa, if they do it, all these texts predominantly made up the majority of the Bible, mm-hmm. then we would be like, well, what are you guys preaching to us? This is all fake. This is all lies. And we know that in the Emerald Tablets, you know, which is my book companion with the Emerald Tablets, that the majority of Jesus' teachings in the New Testament come directly from the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, which are 36, 38,000 year old teachings. So they must control and hide and secure evidence of this information and this knowledge to keep people basically in this uh, level of ignorance where they can continue to control them and steal their money. The Council of Nicaea came together, built up the mythology. They added to the story. They took from a lot of ancient texts and tablets, and then they kind of curated this book, which they want to call it a canonized Bible, right? So they took from here, took from there, this tablet, that tablet, this scripture, that papyrus, this Nag Hammadi piece, we like, we, oh, we like this coming out of, out of this, um, text over here. And then they kind of just culminated together and, and then remixed it, put their own spin on it to and make sure that slavery was approved and okay, right? Mm-hmm. Well, we want to add that in there. Got to make sure the slavery is approved, you know, because mm-hmm. people were enslaving each other since back in before the black slaves. I'm talking about in the ancient times, slaves were already going on. Slavery was already Egypt, going yeah. on. Sure. It was, yeah. It's nothing new. Yeah. And then so you had that. And then, of course, we want to collect a lot of money. So they have to pay us. We got to make sure we got the money. You got to pay. You know what I'm saying? And you got to do the labor and you got to bring the offerings because we're our, we ourselves are not going to go out and hunt and, and, and grow farms and everything else. So you guys, you're going to have to bring these offerings to us. We want it already cooked. So make sure it's a burnt offering. <laughs> Make sure you drain the blood. Make sure it's healthy for us. And bring us your fresh, your first harvest, because we want the freshest fruit and the freshest vegetables. We don't want the stale stuff. We want your freshest wheat and the freshest breads. And so people would come down and bring everything to the church and give it all away, along with whatever money they had left. Uh, And these people would live like fat cats, literally, off of pimping the knowledge and understanding of what's going on and tricking people into believing that 
they had some access to divine power and knowledge when they were just really uh, high level pimps as well. I call them, man. And the people, you know, the ignorance of the people, you know, you almost can't blame them. But yet at the same time, it's like, how can you how can so many masses well, of people stand up and fall for this? But, I, you know, it happens. But the, also, you got to remember the way that they went around, the way that the Council of Nicaea put this in place with Rome and Rome said, we're now going to dominate the planet with this religion. Mm -hmm. So they combined their beliefs with the Christianity all right, because they felt like to keeping it separate was creating too much, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, ang anger between the two sides, and everybody wanted to go head to head. So you know what? We're going to combine it. We'll add our stuff in with their stuff, and we'll make it a a national religion. But now here's the trick: as Rome was on its global escapade, trying to dominate and take over the planet, everywhere they went, they would then instill and install this Christianity, this Catholic Christianity, in those areas. But this is how they did it. People believe that Christianity was spread by love and the good news and, and, and no, it was spread by rape, bloodshed, murdering and killing. And so when they came to your town, they literally would take your women and your children. They would, you know, they would take the leader of that village or whatever. They would show that like, you guys are going to bow down to us. You're going to follow this religion. You're going to speak our language and they'll make an example out of somebody and then everybody else would fall, follow suit. And if they didn't, then they would say, okay, we're going to give you a lot of these torture devices. They would have the Pope's spear, all right, which is still in the museums right now. Mm -hmm. They, which I saw they would it. stick that into a woman's personal parts mm -hmm. and it would explode mm -hmm. on the inside of her. They would have this triangular pyramid with a spire on top and it would reel a man up and down and let it go up into his back door over and over again until he died. Uh, and they had all these torture mechanisms. They tortured and killed over 80 million people over the course of 700 years under the uh, under the order of the popes in order to spread love and peace and christianity yes. all around the planet mm -hmm. and so but this is you know again all with the authority of rome so this global conquest to spread this and collect money uh was all done by bloodshed and and torture not by love and peace even the depiction of jesus oh. was switched over to the face that became the global popular face that was actually caesar borgia who was actually uh, one of the sons of an actual pope uh, and killed his own brother to try to take uh, his place. Uh, this guy was just an evil, brutal, killing ruler. Uh, it, his father commissioned uh, the artist to paint him, his image, as the image of Jesus. And that image still propagates the planet till this very day. And so the image that a lot of people are praying to is not the Jesus that they think it is, but actually a natural born killer. It's great uh, marketing, great propaganda, subliminal information, subliminal messages and teachings. And it, it just gets birthed into the into the genome and it passes on from generation to generation. Same thing happened with this Jesus figure. His name isn't even Jesus. His name was Yeshua. Yeshua. Yeshua okay? yeah. 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 That's the actual name. And so but again, Jesus, the J is a new letter. It didn't even exist until recently. I mean, you know, so we're talking about, OK, what is really the name? Isus. When you look into the root word of that and you go back into some of the ancient tongues, you find out it's hail Zeus. So people that are calling on the name of Jesus all the time, they're calling for help from Zeus, which is actually uh, a converted name from the Sumerian pantheon. So they're calling on Enlil is what they're calling on. <laughs> they're not calling on any son of the creator of the universe. And this is why a lot of prayers don't actually work. People don't understand the power of speech and then calling on names and, and the cymatic frequencies they create. Then when you're completely ignorant to what's what you're really saying, it's no wonder why billions of prayers go up every single day all around the world. But then again, look at the state of the world on a daily basis. You can clearly see that uh, if somebody has a positive outcome, more than likely it's just luck. And I want to add one thing to this before we go on too. I want people to understand I'm not an atheist. I believe in a creator of the universe yeah. because the quantum physics proves that we're living inside of a creation. There's no way to dispute that. There's no way to doubt it. We're living in a programmed uh, holographic light matrix. That is a method of use for this creation. But we are in this It's created by an entity and believe that there is a God. I don't I, I'm, I'm not. I just believe that the biblical version is not specifically talking about the creator of the universe. I believe those are the words of men about men that have manipulated it to be God. 
And actually, the word God in the Bible is mistranslated by accident on purpose. The original root word for that is God's with an S. And everywhere where you see God singular is actually supposed to have an S on the end. So there's so much going on. There's been tainted so much by man. Uh, you know, but, but I do believe that there is a God. But again, you have to research everything that you believe in, especially if you're looking for this information to carry you into eternity. You should know every little tiny detail about it. You shouldn't just take it point in fact from somebody standing at a pulpit. You should be the expert on it yourself.